Jerry Judy, a great game against his former team, uh, the Denver Broncos. A lot of deep balls from Jameis Winston. Um, Jake's going to do a film breakdown on some of the deep throws. Jake, uh, take us through what you saw, and uh, we'll just let it rip with uh, Jerry Judy and the deep throws. Yeah, so we're going to start like uh, the, I think that's the first play of the game, just kind of over the middle uh, concept where they're selling uh, a toss left and then they do a great job of working an underneath concept to throw J Jerry Judy's drag there. Th this is kind of the stuff I want to hit on. This is a game plan specific thing. They they wanted to take Judy from left to, uh, from from the side of Patrick Sertan to the opposite side there with 39 and pick apart the Broncos use of match quarters to get a, an outside leverage leaning post to then come back down the middle of the field. And uh, in, in another end breaker right here where he does a great job catching it. But that, that specific play from Judy was something the Browns came back to. They missed that throw. Jameis led him too far. But you'll see here in a moment, they do come back to it. And here's a top of the screen look against Patrick Sertan, one of the, one of the better corners in the NFL right now, if not the best. And just an example of a little more physical at the catch point at the break point. Uh, really good, strong work there from Judy. Um, you know, that, that was a that was a pretty consistent um, theme for him as he continues to grow here. It's just like understanding the physical aspect of it. This is a flood variation. I was talking about this in the last set. This is Kevin loves to do these three to a side overload coverage. He does a great job of throttling down in the window right there, not being too fast, uh, giving himself and the quarterback a great opportunity to catch the football in that in that tight window again against Sertan, top of the screen low you know that, that we call that a brush by where you're taking that inside arm and running him past and inside pivot stop route great example but here is the side to side again starting on Sertan side work to the left side against 39 this is their quarters look that they like to run the Broncos do against this condensed set and the Browns just said hey we're going to max protect it where you know the safety to the play side is going to eye David and Joku here and at that point it's just a one-on-one -on -one with Judy can he get inside and win and run past him yeah it's pretty simple right he can run past guys, and he's, his vertical speed is obviously very much in check, and I just thought that was a great game plan used from the Browns, and especially not being afraid to come back to it after they missed it uh, earlier in the game. Uh, the two-point conversion, which I think followed that touchdown here, is just a nice little speed out where you know, you got to create an immediate upfield threat to stop the defender's feet, and then you win to the sideline. Great catch and extension over the edge there to, to, to get the two points, and then I think I believe this is uh, sort of a another middle in breaking against a five man pressure. So the Broncos only have two under and it's just about Judy kind of climbing the middle of the field there. And again, good burst after catch. That's the stuff that you like to see. I think there were a lot of schemed up stuff here to Judy where it worked out in his favor, but uh, obviously is still um, a, a pretty, pretty big threat after the catch to, to, to get up field fast and create yards, especially if you leave him open like that. It's kind of running a now flat here against, again, a left side overload. And what I liked uh, specifically about it was his lean forward at the catch there to get upfield initially instead of kind of sitting there and stopping. So a lot of good traits from Jerry in this one. This is a, the, the last drive curl. It's kind of a meaningless catch, but I wanted to highlight every target he had. So, you know, I just uh, I think that as, as he gets more comfortable in this offense and they get more comfortable with how to use him, they use him in a variety of ways. They'll play him at Z, they'll play him at X, they'll let him be a big slot and get against some of those nickel corners who can't really keep up with him vertically. So uh, I just to continue to be impressed and he's catching everything, doing all the little things right. And uh, is a really good reason for optimism uh, around Browns fans about what his ceiling can be based on, uh, you know, maybe some perceptions that he can only maybe be a secondary target as far as volume goes and be a part of an efficient offense. He's kind of proving that he can lead an offense uh, in this way and uh, an efficient group, because what makes a guy a, air quotes here, like a wide receiver one, is that they're targeted often and their offense is efficient when targeting him. And that's been the case. He was really tough, uh, great, gritty performance against the Steelers and carried that into this one too. And, you know, among the top five receiving yards in the league right now. So there's really no point in putting a ceiling on what a guy who gets out of a bad situation in his previous stop there in Denver was. Uh, ironically, they find a really good quarterback when he leaves, but I think he's just doing a good job of proving like, hey, this guy was selected top 10. He was selected in front of C.D. Lamb and Justin Jefferson. There's clearly immense talent here, and that's where I'm most optimistic about continuing with Jameis is like he's not afraid to use him and throw him and trust him, and that's why you, you feel good about the end of the year. Like, let's evaluate what Jerry is. And Cedric Tillman's had this nice run of play. Like, oh, okay, maybe this wide receiver room has more talent than we were lying to ourselves about watching this offense struggle early in the year when the quarterback play was inconsistent. So that's... um. 
a big reason for, you know, a, ca- a sort of a cautious celebration here is we're seeing that oh, the weapons are maybe better than uh, what we were led to believe based on, again, the performance of the guy trying to deliver the football. 